Welcome everyone. Today I want to tell you what my accountant had to say about Uber. Let's talk about it. Welcome everybody. It's Joe time. Today's Java Jive Coffee Talk Hot Cup of Joe comes to us from Harley Davidson. Now they're not an official sponsor of this channel. I wish they were. I don't have a sponsor on this channel. This is just merely a mug plug. So we're going to start out by talking about tax day. It is April 15th and here in the United States, and I know most of you are watching this in the US, April 15th means we have to have our taxes in. It's time to pay the piper. And I did have to write out that check $820 to the US Treasury. And I love writing that check. I mean, I don't like paying taxes. Who likes paying taxes? But I would much rather be paying a few dollars and getting money back. Because when you get money back, all it means is the government used your money interest-free for a year. I'd rather keep that money in my account earning interest and then give it to them when they ask for it. Uh, I'll never understand people that somehow think that the government's giving them money. Um, no, you're just overpaying. So I was at my accountant this morning and she asked me, do you still drive for Uber? And I thought, hmm, where is this going? Is there some undeclared income? Is there something that I don't know about? Completely different. Uh, what I wasn't expecting. What she said was, well, I have a friend and I don't remember what the situation was. They had car trouble or whatever, but she was thinking of looking into Uber, but she was kind of put off by this whole idea of, you know, the bad news and people getting uh, assaulted and all of that stuff that's going on. We'll be talking about that in a minute. And she thought, well, maybe it'd be nice to work with somebody that I knew which got me thinking about the whole idea of having clients and customers. We haven't talked about that in a while. And it's been in the forefront of my mind because I have encountered it intentionally because I wanted to do a little research for this channel. So I had another uh, friend and she encountered the same thing and someone at her work asked her about Uber. And her advice was, yeah, I mean, the situation was a coworker of my friend was, uh, they had their parents staying with them, their elderly parents, and they were looking at options to get them to the airport or pick them up from the airport. And her concern was with getting them back to the airport. And she said, we never know when there's Ubers around. I mean, if you are in a major metropolitan area, there's probably always going to be an Uber at all hours of the day. You get into areas like the outer suburbs of many communities, especially mid-sized cities like Milwaukee, there's never a guarantee. And as I have been saying for probably almost the two years I have been doing this channel, um, the problem is Uber doesn't have a true scheduling system. So what do a lot of drivers do? They give their personal information and then they contact them, which is what happened. And she told me, well, I know this guy that can pick you up, take you to the airport for a straight 40 bucks cash. Hmm, my radar went up, but I thought I'm gonna look into this. And so I set up an airport ride with him. This was a week ago, Saturday. And I gently quizzed him during the ride. Oh, how do you do this? How does it work? I mean, we're not on the app now. Are, are you driving for Uber right now? I didn't let him know I was a driver. I didn't let him know I had these channels. I just wanted to find out how he works his uh, business, his side business. And it's just that it's a side, side hustle. Uber's already a side hustle, right? This is a side hustle to Uber. He recognized people may want a ride. They may want to set up in advance to pick up. They want to know the absolute cost ahead of time. Yeah, I want to know this is 40 bucks, not 47, not 52, not 38. I want to know what it is to take me to the airport. And then I started, you know, I, I had to be careful. I wasn't prodding too hard, but I started asking about things like insurance and licensing and things of that nature. And he said, wow, well, I have a chauffeur's license um, in Illinois for when I go to Chicago. 
chauffeur's license almost means nothing. When I was uh, a younger version of myself, I used to be a bellhop for Marriott Hotel. And we needed a chauffeur's license to drive the hotel shuttle. You know, we go pick people up at the airport. It really means very little having a chauffeur's license. Sometimes you need that for a variety of different jobs. But my concern was many, were many, for this individual. Number one, insurance. Not only is he completely off the grid, but he has no insurance, I'm quite sure, to cover this little side-side hustle. He doesn't even have the benefit of Uber's insurance. As poor as a lot of you think it is, he got something going on there. If he gets in an accident and he was ferrying somebody about, taxiing someone about, without a taxi license, without insurance, not in an app, nothing, I don't know what that would do, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be good. Additionally, anyone got wind of this major league fine to be operating a transport business, livery service, um, whatever it might be designated or identified as in your area, unlicensed. You're just a guy that's putting yourself out for hire with no business license, nothing going on. So that one concerned me quite a bit. And it's making me wonder how many people are operating that way, just taking jobs on the side. Additionally, what would happen if something would go wrong? No one knows where he is. No one knows who he's with. There's no record of his travel at all, unless he tells his wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, hey, I'm going to be taking this guy to the airport this morning. No, no one knows where he's going to end up, uh, which kind of leads into this next story. This morning on Good Morning America, Seymour and Marcy Josephson, and they are the parents of Samantha Josephson, who was a young lady in South Carolina who was recently killed by somebody posing as an Uber driver. People have said in the comments he wasn't posing as an Uber driver. I don't know if he was or not. He certainly pulled in. He certainly let someone get into his car, and he certainly drove away with them. So whether he had the branding on his vehicle or not, I don't know. I suspect from watching the video, he sees you know a girl looking at her phone, obviously waiting for a pickup. He pulls in, makes himself available. It's semantics whether he was posing as an Uber driver or acting as a fake Uber driver. But regardless, the parents of this unfortunate young woman who was murdered were on Good Morning America. And, uh, you know, there's Stephanopoulos grinning from ear to ear like a goofball when he's in front of these grieving parents. I'll never understand the media. You know, why didn't they just put that, that pillar of journalistic integrity, Michael Strahan, up there to interview them. Okay, I'm being facetious. So regardless, the upshot of it was, first of all, they were instrumental in passing this new bill, which was named for their daughter, about having lighted signs on cars. My opinion on that, next to useless. Now, some of you said, what about the beacons that match colors? Beacons aren't available in all areas and all drivers don't have them. Um, yeah, that'd be a little better. I suppose, but I don't think the language of that uh, bill or the law says beacons that match color driver with passenger. I think it just said lighted signs, which so what? Lighted sign means nothing. That doesn't assure that someone is a genuine rideshare driver. It means they went on eBay and bought a lighted sign or like I did, made their own. All right, the second thing they were talking about is front license plates. Um, I think it's convenient. A lot of states do not have front license plates. I don't understand it. I understand it from like my perspective. You know, I have a, a Corvette. A lot of Corvettes don't look good. They're not designed to have a license plate on the front and they don't look good. But is that really a good reason not to have a license plate? You know, and we can talk about, you know, civil rights and all that, but your, your car has tags anyway. You, you got plates on the back. Why not have plates on the front? Just my view, it seems to me, my opinion anyway, that it would be a lot easier for law enforcement. They see cars coming at them. They can get the tag number, not just um, driving away. And I guess their idea was, 
when the car is pulling up, they can identify the license plate more readily. Apparently their daughter didn't check the license plate anyway, so it's rather a moot point. But personally, I think front plates are a good idea. I have been in that situation when I'm at airports and where do you always see the car? You never see the car leaving you. The rideshare vehicle's always coming at you. I'm always looking at my app. I can never see the license plate. Then I have to walk to the back of the car and check the plate. And the driver's wondering what the heck is going on. They just have plates on the front. It's more convenient all the way around. Whether it's going to help in abductions, murders, assaults, I kind of doubt it. License plates are in vehicles already. Which led to their next suggestion, having a QR code, front and back windshield. Meaning you can scan with the app, and they were saying, oh, they already have the technology, absolutely. It's redundant all over again twice. If you're not going to check the license plate, what makes you think you're going to walk up and check that QR code? You already have something to check. You have a license plate to check. You have the make, model, color of the vehicle to check. You have a picture of the driver to check. You have the driver's name. You have so many checks already. QR code? What's it really going to do? If our people are not taking, when I say our people, I'm talking about our riders, and I'm talking about us when we are in the capacity of a rider. If we are not doing those things anyways, how is adding one more thing really going to make a difference? Just do your due diligence. Check the license plate. Check the make, model, color of the vehicle. Check your driver. Is that the same picture you're looking at? It's simple. They're also saying, ask, who are you here to pick up? I know we've been going back and forth with that on this channel, and I suspect other people's channels. A lot of people are saying that's all we have is their name. Once we give that up, we give up our, our edge. Maybe, maybe not. Ask to see their app. Hey, can I see your app? Let's see if, if you're matching it with me. Um, someone, someone has to have a check in, in one direction or the other. Like I said prior, I'll concede that, all right, maybe... Maybe um, we don't want to ask for or give out our name before we know theirs. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's a major point, but I'll concede it. I'll give you that. Whether or not lighted signs, front lights and plates, QR codes are going to make a difference, I kind of doubt it. I think it's just up to us to pay attention, us as riders. All right, I was going to talk about one more thing, but I think we're going to hold off. This video is already getting a little long and I have coffee to drink. So, as always, I encourage you to leave your comments down below. Please like and share the videos. If you haven't already, please subscribe and link or click rather that bell icon up above so you know when I post new videos. And while you're at it, go over to the Average Me channel. I need 55 more people. If you guys could help me out, if you haven't already, go to the Average Me channel. It's down below and just subscribe. That would really help me out in reaching my first thousand. I can't even do live streams on that channel until I have a thousand people. You would be doing me a great favor. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'm Mark with Uber Hints.